Hello and welcome to the news update on Enterprise TV. I am Henry Igwebike. We begin in Lagos where a court of appeal has upheld the election of Siminalai Fubara as governor of River State, dismissing the petition filed by Tonya Cole of the All Progressive Congress. Tonya Cole prayed the court to order INEC to declare him winner of the elections. Cole's case contesting Fubara's election had been initially dismissed by the River State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal in October. In Abuja, the Court of Appeal has nullified the election of Yusuf Liman, the Speaker of the Kaduna State House of Assembly. The court also ordered a rerun in five polling units in Makara constituency. The Kaduna State Assembly Election Petition Tribunal had, on September 30, nullified the victory of Liman and ordered a rerun in 42 polling units. Liman represents a Makara constituency in the State Assembly. A petition was filed before the tribunal by the candidates of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Solomon Katuka, challenging the election of Liman of All Progressive Congress, APC. In his petition, the PDP candidates alleged that there were gross irregularities during the election. He argued that he won the March 18 House of Assembly election in Makara constituency and should have been declared the winner. He argued that there were irregularities in 37 polling units in the Makara ward, two polling units in Banawa ward, one polling unit in Kakuri Gwari ward, one polling unit in Television ward, and one polling unit in the Kakuri Hausa word. The former chairman of Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Atahiru Jega, has advised President Bola Tinibu to review the appointment of partisan individuals as INEC officials. Last month, Tinibu announced the nomination of 10 resident electoral commissioners, two of whom critics say were B card carrying members of the ruling All Progressive Congress APC, while two other nominees were also found to be long-term allies of prominent politicians serving in Tinubu's government. But the Nigerian Senate has since gone on to confirm their nominations despite widespread displeasure from Nigerians. According to Jega, the urgent move to review the appointment of the resident electoral commissioners had become necessary in light of the wrong signal it sends about the government's intention to improve the integrity of elections. He recalled an incident in Adama State where a wreck illegally declared the result of the 2023 governorship election in the state before the conclusion of the exercise, saying the situation was possible because politicians help such people to get appointed in order to manipulate the electoral process. Two police officers, a DPO and an inspector whose names were not mentioned, have been reported to have been killed by suspected gunmen in Imo State, Southeast Nigeria, on Monday. The officers were shot dead by gunmen at Ahira Junction in Ahiazo Mbisi local government area of the state while they were fueling their operational vehicles. A spokesperson for the police in Imu, Henry Okoye, said the gunmen who were dressed in military camouflage as well as black and red regalia opened fire at the DPO and the inspector, killing them instantly. A special tactical squad of the police and the military in the state a special tactical squad of the police and the military in the state have been directed to track down the killers, while 18 arrests have been made so far. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has alerted Nigerians against unauthorized bank withdrawals linked to automated teller machines, ATM, card swapping fraud. The commission issued the alert on Monday in a statement by its spokesperson, Dele. Oyewale, according to the EFCC, fraudsters engage in this activity typically by keeping a debit card from the same bank and under the guise of assisting a confused bank customer at an ATM. Swiftly swap the card while memorizing the PIN used with fake cards. The commission highlighted that card swapping incidents occur at various service delivery points, including points of sale, POS, terminals, and ATM points. 
expressing concern over the increasing prevalence of this fraudulent practice. The EFCC urged the public to exercise caution when using debit cards. In foreign news, more Palestinians have been freed from the Israeli prison on the fourth day of a truce between Israel and Hamas. The latest release of 33 people from the Orpha prison in the West Bank and a detention center in Jerusalem by the Israeli government means a total of 150 Palestinians have been released since Friday, the day both sides began swapping hostages and prisoners. 51 Israeli hostages, including three-year-old twin sisters, have been freed by Hamas as part of the deal. Qatar has said the pause in fighting will be extended by two days, which Israel has not confirmed or denied. Both Hamas and Qatar, which has played a major role in the talk between the warring sides, said 30 Palestinian children and three women were due to be freed. By the evening, it was reported that a bus carrying the newly released Palestinian prisoners had arrived in Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. Images showed people in the Palestinian city waiting to greet them, some carrying green flags of Hamas, their faces covered with balaclavs. Separate images showed a Palestinian boy named Muhammad Abu al Hummus reuniting with his mother and other family members at the family home in East Jerusalem. In sports, Nigeria midfield star Alex Iwobi on Monday night scored his first league goal for Fulham in a thrilling 3-2 victory over Wolves at Craven Cottage. The London team which endured a winless stick since the triumph over Sheffield United also scored three goals. It will be who started the scoring move from midfield was in the right place to capitalize on a well-executed cutback by Fulham left back Anthony Robinson in the seventh minute. Neatly placing the ball between the legs of Wolves goalkeeper Joshe Saar. It will be who said during the post-match interview that the VAR is not helping much with subjective decisions added that he is not expecting a call of apology from referee boss Howard Webb over his not so impressive officiating of the match. It will be who could have had a second goal in the 69th minute was prevented by Saar who made a good save. The win propelled Fulham to 14th place tied with Wolves with a chance to face Liverpool in their upcoming. That's the news update at this time. Keep watching Enterprise TV for more interesting programming. I'm Henry Igwebike. Enterprise TV, your one-stop shop for news, programs, human angle stories, the economy, sports and much more. We go the extra mile to bring incredible details to you. So hop on the train now. Enterprise TV, a tradition of truth.